Immigrant voices are hugely important for the future of the American political system. In the last presidential elections, more than 23 million immigrants were eligible voters. And in states like Arizona and Texas, we've seen how important their vote is. Immigrants make up one-tenth of the U.S. electorate, and that number will only grow in future elections. But immigrants don't vote as one block. They bring a hugely diverse background of belief systems and issues they care about. We're seeing tremendous growth in the immigrant population. Uh, the Latino population is the largest of those immigrant voters, but the Asian American uh, immigrant population is actually growing as a percentage at the fastest rate. We're seeing very, very large growth in Asian American voters in key battleground states. Since the year 2000, the size of the immigrant electorate nearly doubled, with eligible Asian American voters growing by 139 percent and Latino voters by 121 percent. These growing numbers of voters are piquing the interests of the Democratic and Republican parties. I mean, we've seen in this last presidential election how immigrants in Arizona and Nevada vote very differently than immigrants in Florida. So what, in your opinion, will political parties have to do to garner greater majorities of this immigrant vote? First thing is talk to them. Talk to those communities. Talk to them in the languages that they operate in. You know, I'm embarrassed to say that I think the Republican Party did much better, for example, with AAPI voters, um, reaching out to AAPI voters in languages long before the Democratic Party did. And if you look at Georgia and Georgia's 7th District, for example, we had a doubling and a tripling in some cases of AAPI voters that helped bring us that turnout in Georgia. As their numbers grow, immigrants play an increasingly larger role in setting the agenda for politicians. It's not surprising then that immigration policy is a key issue. Immigrants see their family members being deported. They see the ways in which immigrants are um, you know, vilified and criminalized, and that matters. And they want to see a party fighting for them on immigration reform and really justice and a proactive, positive vision about immigrants in this country. We're seeing immigrants much more engaged today. They tell us that they feel that they have to defend themselves, that they're under attack. And so we are seeing today immigrants really get involved in politics and make their voice heard. And that's an exciting a part. They're a part of our country. They're a part of our economy. And so they should be a part of our voting electorate. Immigrants are a growing part of America's voting electorate, but they're not as well represented in the halls of power. In 2019, only 14 congressional lawmakers representing just 3% of all voting members in both chambers were foreign born. It's a slight uptick from recent Congresses, but it's substantially below the foreign born share of Congresses many decades ago. It's also far below the foreign born share of the United States as a whole, which was nearly 14% in 2020. We have a lot of progress to make, um, but I feel really good about the fact that when people see somebody like me in office or any of the other immigrant members of Congress, we change the way people think about their futures, right? So it's not just about me, it's about how somebody thinks about, wait, it's possible for me as an immigrant to serve in the United States Congress and to represent um, the diversity and the strength and the courage that I bring as an immigrant. And so that's my hope is that we have many more people running. We are doing that at the state legislative level as well, um, at the local level, and hopefully soon we will be able to have you know massive increases in Congress as well. Obala Obala is an Ethiopian refugee who spent 10 years living in a refugee camp in Kenya before settling in Austin, Minnesota in 2013. Years after being involved in the city's local politics, he just won a historic city council election and became the city's first black elected official. When I was in the refugee camp, uh, I always dreamed to come to America. And when I, w when I moved to America here, I knew it that this is land of opportunity and those opportunity doesn't come for free. You have to go outside. And when I came here, I just consider myself, I'm a citizen of America. I went to the mayor and I just tell mayor, mayor, my name is Obala Obala. I've been in Austin for three months and now I'm a student at Riverland here. I just want to tell you uh, I'm moving here and I'm not going anywhere if there is anything I can do. And what are your ambitions further? Do you want to stay in politics? Yeah, um, uh, I, I love politics. I, I love uh, like 
I will not consider myself as a politician, but um, I consider myself as a, a public servant. You know, I, I want to be, um, you know, uh, be the person who will help people who are in need. The U.S. foreign-born population is changing rapidly. By 2065, immigrants and their children will make up 36% of the U.S. population, and their votes will change America's politics. To understand this, we need to understand their values and the issues they care about. To learn more about this, as well as many other immigrant-related topics, follow us on social media, at Immigrant Food, join our newsletter, and join us inside the restaurant to stay united at the table. See you guys next month for a different issue.